Hi there. My name is Lauri Hilander. Welcome to my vlog. Um, in this episode, we're gonna talk about uh, snowboarding gear for an 8,000 meter expedition. Um, I haven't snowboarded at 8,000 meters ever, as a disclaimer. I'm planning to, but this is not do it like this video, this is how I think I could do it gear-wise. So let's begin. I've climbed an 8,000 meter peak before without supplementary oxygen in 2019 uh, when I did Manaslu as a member in Summit Climb Expedition. Um, and since then I've been kind of thinking that what kind of gear you could could and should use while you're descending an 8,000 meter mountain. Manaslu is more or less the same altitude than Choyu is. There's 50 meter difference from the summits. Um, so temperature wise and, and altitude wise, they should be more or less comparable. Uh, the biggest issue I had from the very beginning with high altitude snowboarding was the boots. Because traditional snowboarding boots are horrible. I normally use in Jones, I think it's called MTB, a uh, split boarding boot. Mm, and my primary idea was that I could boot an over boot around it, just buy a, maybe a size larger one and fit in maybe uh, heatable insoles, things like, uh, like, like the thermic insoles where you get a battery and uh, it heats the, 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 the front part of the um, so, but very quickly I realized that even though these boots are getting better and better, they're not really real mountaineering boots. There's major issues like the the, the crampon, um, the ability to put crampons on them. They don't really stick that well, even though it has an, an how do you call it, a bail back here nowadays. But still. Um, I'm worried that it's it, it's gonna be too heavy and too cold for the mission. After that, I started looking on hard boots. Um, to be honest, I think hard boots could be a very, very good solution for high altitude snowboarding. Uh, they're very light, um, they move very well, um, especially if you're used to these kind of boots, why not? Um, but I'm quite worried about the, the warmth of these boots. Uh, I would need to get a very large size to get in and then what would be called an arctic liner and then an over boot around the shoe. And uh, even though I've been testing the hard boot split boarding, I don't really think that's for, for high altitude. So what I ended up with, <sighs> was an 8,000 meter boot by La Sportiva and Olympus Mons Cube, the latest version of the Olympus Mons shoe for 8,000 meter climbing. Um, and I decided to give it a chance as a snowboarding boot. I've done so far like eight to nine days with these. Uh, some of them on split board, some of them on a complete snowboard. Uh, and I'm very, very surprised how well these things snowboard. Uh, disclaimer, these are not snowboarding boots. So if you buy a pair of these and you break them, I don't take any accountability on that. But I've been testing these for a while. Um, it's a very, very, very light 8,000 meter boot. I used to wear an, 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 an Millet Everest boot. This is for sure like 200 grams lighter per foot. This is, it, the difference is huge, but my boots were the older generation. Uh, the application of how you open the boot from the side is, 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 is super easy. Uh, the previous shoes that I had had a zipper in the front. I like this a lot. It has a dual boas, which kind of constrict the boot. Uh, there's an inner boot and then there's like a slipper inside the inner boot. Um, these things are super warm and light and walk well. 
the only issue so far I've figured out snowboarding wise is that these are not snowboarding shoes so they lack the support on your ankle when you're leaning forward so on your uh, backside edge they work rather well but the front side edge the feeling is different when you're used to a super stiff uh, like a Jones MTB type of the stiffest of the stiff snowboarding boots uh, and that's my more or less only concern so far I've been planning to do maybe a bit of a do-it-yourself uh, rig to uh, get the ankle a bit stiffer but I, I don't really know if I actually need to do that it might be just that I need to get used to the boot a bit more it has come on camera out of focus it has these things I think all the tech inserts that you can put them on a pin binding and you could split board a ski uh, your split board with fr from these inserts I haven't tested that because I'm like 98% sure that that's more or less irrelevant for snowboarding at, at high altitude I'm not gonna ski up the mountain I'm gonna carry the snowboard up on my backpack and then I'm gonna snowboard down why the walking up is super slow it takes a lot of effort and time it wouldn't make any sense to do a ski stroke breathe for half a minute and take another ski stroke it's just easier to walk in that perspective or at least that's how I think it works one of the major advantages I assume the 8000 meters boots will have over either hard boots or actual snowboarding or splitboarding boots is that they should be warmer in comparison at least I've had some minor frostbites on my uh, toes and that's one thing I'm constantly worried about when I'm spending time uh, outside in, in, in during winter time when I climbed Manaslu I had a uh, one of these and and heatable sole uh, inside the 8000 meter boots I liked them quite a lot they worked surprisingly well I got something like seven hours out of the batteries um, so I was able to go through the, the, the cold portion of the night with very warm fit and when it got warmer during the day it was it was warmer to climb and, and so I didn't need those at that stage mm. the ones I had wouldn't have and didn't have an unchangeable battery but this one runs a battery on the um, on the cord so I could have two set of batteries to keep my my toes warm and cozy uh, I'll test also an, an, an heatable sock you have a battery pack that you put on the on the on the on the sock and then there's some cordings inside the inside the sock to keep your worms nice and toasty keep your toes nice and warm and toasty uh, it hasn't been cold enough to test those thingies I've been snowboarding the 8000 meter boot at minus 15 degrees so far and my feet get sweaty because it's so warm inside them so I hope it goes minus 30 or something like that here in the Finnish Lapland and I, I, I can get an actual test done with those things One major pro for the 8000 meter boots for sure is the ability to use an, an fully automatic crampon. The snow and split boarding boots are kind of famous for uh, having problems with crampon front parts slipping off. So the, the whole crampon kind of falls out from the boots, which is not very nice if you're in a place where you are relying on your crampons. Uh, you walk a lot on, on, on crampies when you go. Uh, up an 8000 meter mountain and and being able to rely on these things is, is just super important bindings uh, so if I decide to go with the 8000 meter boots 
I automatically need to use and split boarding or snowboarding binding. This is a Plum Feon carbon binding. Um, I'm, I'm new to this model, I've been using this since the beginning of this season. Uh, maybe like six, seven days on this so far. Uh, super, super light French made binding. Has a quite nice base plate, very kind of different system how it attaches to the board. Uh, the lever system in the, in the side, I don't know if I'm a huge fan yet, but so far I've tested it and it it fits and kind of um, tightens the board very very nicely. Um, I hope to test this thingy uh, on a very cold circumstances and see if it builds ice inside it, but, but so far so good. But in a nutshell, uh, very light base, a carbon high back, uh, two, I would say, rather normal straps, nothing special there. Mm, they fit the 8000 meter shoe quite nicely inside. There's not much limiting parts on the side, so you just have the base plate more or less, and then uh, these teeny tiny kind of 90 degree plates, and then the heel cup. So you're able to fit the boot quite nicely. The boot is very wide and very long, so this doesn't have any constrictions for for the uh, for the boot within the binding. Uh, one very nice thing is that you can get these babies more or less into a 90 degree angle. I normally tend to split board a bit more on a forward leaned position, but with the 8000 meter boots, I feel that I can't do that. The boot is more angled towards 90 degree and doesn't have that much forward lean, so the binding kind of uh, is able to accommodate that uh, preference. These things are super adjustable, so you can adjust practically anything. You can adjust how the, the heel cup sits, the angles, everything more or less. That's a very nice thing. The downside that is is that when you take this kind of a binding into an expedition, you need to have an extra that and extra this and extra that and extra this. So it maybe is a bit spare part heavy for expedition use, but otherwise, pfft, just super binding so far. When I started this project, I I was thinking quite a lot about the snowboard itself. That what kind of snowboard would be the best tool for an expedition-driven snowboarding. I I never been on an an, an month and a half snowboarding expedition to the greater ranges. This is the first for me and 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 I lack a bit of information on that front. If you go online and check that what kind of snowboards are used to uh, snowboard down from an 8000 meter summit, there's again zero, zero replies. Mm, I think most of the people who have snowboarded down from an 8000 meter peak so far have used an, an solid board. And I'm planning to use and split board. And there's a reason for that. And that's that I ride very long snowboards. This is a 162 um, tour operator from Amplid who are very kind to support me on this trip. Um, and this is the shortest split board I've ever ridden. So I like my boards very long and very wide. Because I'm a big guy, I'm like 92 kilos dry weight. And, and I, I need big boards, uh, especially if I'm, I'm wearing a down suit and a backpack which might have a tent or two inside, it, it, it needs to carry a lot of weight. So I wrote an email to Peter Bauer, the um, snowboarding legend from 80s and the 90s and, and the 2000s and, and, and I said that I I'm planning to do this kind of thing. What do you think about what kind of snowboard should I ride? And uh, and he said that, well, there's carbon fiber options, and you could do a very very light carbon fiber snowboard. Uh, you could ride something like the Milligram, which I actually use too. is a superb snowboard. Or you could use do even something even lighter. Uh, or then you could go a bit heavier and use a carbon fiber board, uh, glass fiber board. Uh, and we had a discussion and we ended up with the glass fiber board. And the pros we could figure out were that uh, fiber glass, glass fiber, 
can take a lot more beating than the carbon fiber can. So if you're going to snowboard in remote Tibet, you don't have the luxury of, of, of establishments where you can actually do anything for the board. You can't get a second board, you can't, you know, fix that much things you uh, are breaking. So glass fiber takes a lot more beating than carbon fiber does. And this is an, an so-called uh, knuckle sandwich construction board. So it's, it's made to last and uh, I'm gonna be riding one of these babies. Why it's split and not a complete? I don't like carrying snowboards uh, on the back of a backpack. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna be using a non-snowboarding backpack on, on high altitude, so the snowboard is a bit on the way because the backpack is very large and it's a bit far away uh, from the back and it's actually at the same height than your, your your head is. So if you would have the board, it would be flapping in the wind uh, behind you and it would be very, very high uh, positioned. So most probably uh, I wanna use um, like an A-frame carry. Uh, I'm gonna test that out later on in the spring, but so far when I've tested it, it feels better to actually have like an A-frame A type of carry with the snowboard. And with split, you can do that. Um, I'm also a bit worried about the wind factor if you have it up like a sail. Uh, sometimes when you're boot packing with the snowboard up a gully and you get a like a strong gust, you feel the the pull backwards, and I don't really want to get that feeling uh, when I'm very high altitude. Other than that, I prefer a board that is twin shaped. It makes, or at least, a bit twin shaped. It has a bit of a back, bit of a back stance. Uh, but still it allows me to ride both ways so if I need to go very slowly on icy section or something like that I can go uh, without turning for a while for sure so and if I need to go a bit on the, the, the goofy side I'm normally a regular uh, that's doable with this kind of a uh, snowboard so that's it that's the intended setup um, I still need to do a bit of testing with the, the boots, the, the heatable stuff, uh, the board. I need to kind of check out the carrying abilities of the big backpack and I need to do a bit of training with the big backpack pulling me back maybe uh, and how that affects the riding style or the posture. So I just need a lot of laps on the selected tools. Other than that, I think I'm, 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 I'm very happy with what I have here now. Um, that's it. Let me know if you have ideas or comments or thoughts about the whole setup. Uh, I'm more than keen to uh, source on your information what you have. Uh, and see you on the next vlog. Bye bye!